Thank you. Um, I didn't mean to start with this, but I found this backstage. And <laughs> I just want to tell you, what this represents is the early, the, the early 90s and the 1980s for me. This is a blast from my pet. This is peace of mind right here. When I was at college, and then a younger person with five roommates, if you could get your hands on one of these, I'm telling you, it's like money in the bank. This, <laughs> this will last you. And uh, back in my day, you had to go to like a rest stop. You know, you had, to, you had to make a stop on the interstate and hope there was a loose one. Um, I was not above futzing with a, with, a, with a contraption to get one out, but... And, uh, yeah, my backpack all these years has served me well. I'm not gonna take it, but, uh, but I want to. It just feels like, you know when you're done with your laundry? And, and you have that, that sense of that you've done it, and even though you got to do it again soon, but there's a fleeting feeling. This, this is that feeling. It's not part of Clusterfuck. I just wanted you to know there's a number of them backstage. Okay. <laughs> you can contrive a reason to go back there. There's a, a number of them. Now, Clusterfuck. Now, for me, that's a a wide range because unfortunately I, I have a problem with anxiety. As I've gotten older, it's gotten worse, so almost anything can be classified as a clusterfuck to me. I, I get a very anxious and very um, ill at ease uh, in many situations. But um, so to, to, to make it more simplified, I looked up cluster in the dictionary. It's a noun. Number of persons or things grouped together, a bunch. And by the way, Sherwood Schwartz was going to call it the Brady Cluster, but I really feel like it wouldn't have been the same. It wouldn't have had that same feeling. The song wouldn't have worked as well, so it's good that he called it the Brady Bunch and not the Brady Cluster. <laughs> True story, not. Um, now, the thesaurus the, uh, is uh, other words for cluster would be clump, mass, group, body, crowd, which brings me to Gustave Le Bon and his famous treatise on mob mentality called the crowd. Whenever you're in a crowd, unfortunately, the IQ of the crowd tends to sink to the lowest common denominator. And that's where you get mob violence or the unexamined narcissism of nationalism and jingoism and sports enthusiasm and uh, <laughs> things of that nature. That to me is a clusterfuck because you can get stuck in that and, and you uh, would like to have a more I-thou relationship with the world instead of the I-it clusterfuck of, of uh, the crowd. That's not, really sorry, I just, it just reminded me of it. I'm so sorry. But uh, now, Whole Foods. That, um, if you've been to Whole Foods, I'm sure many, you're here. Many of you have, you bring your own bag. I get it, I got gotcha. you, I got gotcha. you. Um, you know there's a protocol, very, very, uh, rigorous protocol to the line <laughs> system. There's the colors and the numbers, and if you'll notice, if somebody bucks the system, you have citizens mobilizing toward action <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> very quickly. And, uh, the, hey, whoa, hey, uh, and then I thought, well, what if someone was getting mugged? You wouldn't get half the response <laughs> that you would at the, somebody breaking the line at Whole Foods. Now, if somebody were getting mugged while breaking the line, then you might have some citizen action there and somebody might do something about it. But um, if, you've, if you've ever noticed what it's like, that, that I consider a clusterfuck, but also 14th Street and Union Square in general, that is a clusterfuck, that, that just that walking. And uh, sometimes there'll be young people walking four or five abreast on the, uh, on the, si on the sidewalk and, and I'll, I'll be walking with my dog or whatever. You can't, you can't, you can't, just, I'm, I'm in the garbage pile. You know what I mean? Like, just, just, just a little bit, of like a little quid pro quo here. Just, just a little shuffle to the side. That, that really drives me nuts, too, because I consider that a clusterfuck. On the subway, oh, my God. Uh, especially if it's around five-ish, and maybe you're in Midtown, and you're going through the exit, but there's that long line trying to enter with their metro cards. And then you have to use the emergency door, the noise, and then dissonance, which is noise, that's a clusterfuck to my ear. 
Uh, again, as grandma has gotten older, noise is a big problem, and I have to just lay on the floor with a towel wrapped around my head <laughs> after that. Okay, now, uh, we did that. Oh, and also the summer heat and all the garbage juice. <laughs> garbage juice just, the smell like smush garbage juice. Stinks like Chinatown. Not a racial slur, nothing. <laughs> Chinatown, I, I, I was not casting aspersions on anyone who resides in Chinatown. Chinatown in general, especially in the summer, has a, has a uh, olfactory uh, <laughs> component to it. And then it, the crowds, and then also the harshness of the language. I'm sure it's a beautiful language, but um, I, it's just, it's just, uh, a friend of mine said once, it sounds like cats fighting. It's just, uh, again, I, I am not, you know, American can sound horrible too. You've seen anyone from the tri-state area and the reality shows. Uh, the way they speak, it is like getting punched in the face. Anytime <laughs> a mob wife or a Jersey Shore person talks, and by the way, if any of them are here, it's with, not wit, with, with. There's an H on it. You know, spell check wouldn't put up with that bullshit. I, I don't know why we have to. You know what I mean? It's just. But when I hear that, and also Caucasian youth vernacular, that's like a clusterfuck to my ear. The on the subway you overhear it. It's uh, when people will say. Uh, it's like, it's like, whatever. No, it's not like what, it's, it's what is. It's what is. It's not like, it's not so random, it's what is, it's what happened. It's not random, it's, it, it's what is. I just don't understand why we are just mangling the Queen's English in such a, in such a way. You know what I mean? I feel like, just, just put a little linguistic spring in your step. That, that's all I ask. Um, now, and then also on the subway when it's, the germs, and if you have to hold the bar, oh. And I just try and do it with my wrist or whatever, but I don't want to fall, you know, that some of the cars are real herky-jerky, and I don't want to be embarrassed, and also I got a giant backpack. Not just to steal the toilet paper, it's just a <laughs> backpack that at the beginning of the day seems fine. By the end of the day, I don't know why, but it's like when you see little kids walking to school with the giant backpacks, uh, my backpack grows to a, an enormous size, so on the subway, it's a real... I just actually uh, shouldn't leave the house during the day, is, is, what, is what should be happening, but unfortunately, people require that you do. I was burped. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Well, it would have been okay if I did, then, then we could have laughed about that. The Duggar family, that's a clusterfuck. <laughs> 19, 19 kids and counting. Um, let's, let's take it easy. It's like, I would say the same thing to Tyler Perry. Just take a break, take a break, just take a break. We get it. It's, uh, you know, Mama Michelle is, uh, eventually the womb will be down by her ankles. I mean, I understand she's serving Jesus to have enough white babies for when the end is nigh. That's, it's called the quiverful movement. That's a real thing in the evangelical world. Um, Part of it is they don't say it out loud, but you gotta have as many white babies as you can for when the eventual race wars come. Now speaking of that, the zombies running fast, that's a clusterfuck and it's uh, <laughs> creating a lot of anxiety. If you've seen the documentary, The Walking Dead, um, <laughs> or 28 Days Later. Now this is something that is alarming. I'm much older than 90% of you and, and back in my day they were slow moving zombies. They, were unwieldy and you could trick them and you could <laughs> pretend to be one of them. That's not the case anymore. Now, I don't know if it has to do with the meth or the go, go, go society. Whatever it is, they're moving uh, at a very rigorous pace. <laughs> and uh, there's always a lot all of a sudden and that's a real clusterfuck. Now, in Atlanta, Georgia, where this documentary is taking place, <laughs> um, a lot of white people, a lot of white zombies. What? Have you been to Atlanta? I mean, I've seen house hunters in Atlanta. They have black realtors and everything, and homeowners. <laughs> That's how I know it's an Atlanta episode of, of House Hunters. If the realtor's black and the home buyers are black, I know we're in Atlanta. <laughs> so where's the black uh, walkers? Where's the black survivors? I mean, they give you one. They had another, dead. Um, <laughs> but... I just think there's a little... Now, another thing that gives me clusterfuck, uh, David Lynch movies. Uh, Mulholland Drive has been 
running on cable, I get a real sense of unease at Mulholland Drive and Lost Highway. I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> and just when I think I got my arms around it, it it's, it's gone from me. And I go to bed with a sense of, 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 of impending doom. And, and, I, and it makes me feel like, oh, I'm not cool enough to get David Lynch, or is it that he doesn't even know? I mean, I, I, I come on. Uh, I have tried to understand David Lynch, but it creates, like I said, I've got a wide net for clusterfuck here. I, it's, it's lots of things to me. And the cell phones, uh, I don't, I, I'm a neo-Luddite. I don't use a computer, that's true. I know many of you can't fathom such a thing, and the young people are thinking, well, how do you get your email? I don't. Uh, that's the first thing people say, can I email you? I don't have uh, email. Well, how do you get your email? I swear to God, that's the second question <laughs> that uh, happens. But I, I feel, I don't want to be that connected. It makes me feel anxious, and uh, that is a clusterfuck to be the data mining. And then also with my cell phone, I don't know how it works. I don't know how to program numbers. I don't know who's calling me. Who did I just agree to meet? I have no idea. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to hope for the best. Um, 917, okay, I must know you. You asked me to lunch, uh, which first of all, come on. Lunch. Uh, uh, that, that on the face of it, it's ridiculous. Why, why are we meeting for lunch? I, at least wait till the sun dips just a little bit before we do anything, and then, not lunch, coffee. At, at, at best, at best, I can do that. All right, now, uh, perishable foods <laughs> create a bit of a clusterfuck in my mind. They're always just behind my neck, hovering. Uh, I try and sometimes buy produce, which I will never get to, but it's just there, expiring every day. <laughs> just there, and I'm always thinking about it, though. Oh, there's, there's vegetables in there that I, I really should get to, but I can't resist every, I got, I got a microwave. Here's the thing, since I quit drinking, I have a sugar, um, I need sugar. Um, have you ever microwaved a stack of Reese's Cups? <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, my God. I, and even Newman's Own peanut butter cups, I don't give a shit. Uh, the organic ones, stack them, eat them with a fork. Um, and then the guilt creates another clusterfuck because every day that I do that, my, my clothes become more ill-fitting and I feel I'm on the precipice of a camel toe. Not to be crass, but uh, I feel it, I feel it coming. Okay, now, was that 10 minutes? Did, I'm British, was, am I British? Is that 10 minutes? Uh, has that been 10 minutes? Okay, well, let me, let me wrap it up, okay? So on the subway, again, I've got to mention this. Another thing, you're a captive audience, and then every once in a while, a person who, shall we say, is between homes, uh, <laughs> comes onto your car, and the, the pitch starts. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, fuck! I hate that tone. I hate the pitch. And I always have singles at the ready. I promise you, in this pocket are singles at the ready, because I feel like, Single, nips it in the bud. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And, but that, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I am a blah, 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 I used to work in uh, and then And then they gild the lily. I am a veteran. And then, uh, you, either you were or you weren't, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that has more added value. Uh, if you were or you weren't, I actually tend to think that pacifists uh, have it tougher because everybody shits on them. So um, if you were to say to me, I am a pacifist and I, I am against the war and I really took it on the chin by uh, the average construction worker in Fox, have a five. That's what I'd say. And then, you know, when, when they say, God bless you, I just feel like you don't need to say that. Uh, you don't need to do that. Uh, I'm an atheist. Not that, I, not that I have a problem with somebody's God, Although I do, I just don't feel like getting into it. Um, I don't feel like getting into it. Don't want to alienate. Uh, there's already a couple people with the folded arms already. I don't need to, don't need to uh, get that. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, then last, uh, I said this is gonna be last. Okay, have you ever worked on a project where um, it's 
a kind of low budget, so they have a, a, a collective van that drops everybody that's working on the crew and the cast off, right? Now, we have agreed upon that we would drive back to the city that everybody gets dropped off at Union Square. That's great. That's egalitarian. That's a utopia. I, can, I like that. I don't like this bullshit after we get off the bridge of, oh my God, can you just drop me at, uh, we're right near 36th Street. No! Wait, wait, we all said, you know, because now we got to pull over traffic and then everybody's crammed in and you're, uh, you got, I, that really bugs me. That's, that's bad form, people. Bush League. Like, when you hold the door for someone, you do not anticipate everyone going through the door, especially with nary a thank you, a doff of the, not a nod. Do you notice that, like, some people just, they don't even acknowledge that you've hold, held the door for them and their compatriots. Uh, clusterfuck, I feel like it is. I feel like it is. I feel like that's a clusterfuck, or especially when you're gonna exit and it was your right of way, and then a line of young people comes in. They keep on a moving, and you know what? I'm frightened of young people, so uh, I am terrified, especially if there's a couple of young, like, frat guys, like, tossing a ball. I'm, I don't like that. I do not like that. If they're tossing a football around, I feel like I'm gonna get hit in the head. Maybe it's an accident, maybe it's not, but it's um, very, I get very scared about that. And also, the loud music in a store, and then I was at Cupcake Cafe yesterday. This is true, I'm not making up a yesterday thing. This happened yesterday. The guy was blasting a jazz station that was mostly static. <laughs> no one else seemed to mind that. Like, it was mostly static. On it, and it was like, and it wasn't even just jazz, like, maybe something we all know, like Take Five. It was a free-form thing, and yeah, okay, I'm supposed to, yes. Um, <laughs> I don't like it. And then you add static to it. But at Cupcake Cafe, if you've ever been there, it's like, I guess, kind of a locals thing. And, and I'm not really a regular there. And there's a real uh, tension with the owner. He, he really doesn't seem to like interlopers. It's, did you ever see uh, American Werewolf in London when they went, to, when they, uh, went into the pub? That, that look, that kind of. <laughs> He wouldn't have warned me about sticking to the moors, or, I mean, beware of the moors. That, he had that kind of vibe, like he would have been quite fine with me being uh, ripped to shreds by a, a were, a were-panther? What, what, on True Blood, a were-panther? Thank God they dropped that storyline, that's a bunch of bullshit. Okay, so, oh, and this, is, uh, this really will be it, the last, I'm so sorry, that's the worst when people do that. Okay, this is from the Village Voice, this week's Village Voice. There's an ad in the back. Are you shy? It says, do you get anxious in front of others? Do you feel embarrassed if you have to give a speech or perform at a public function? Do you avoid meeting new people, going to parties, or dating? Is it difficult for you to eat, drink, or write while others are looking? That, that one, I don't get, like, I watch you. But yeah, right, isn't that everyone? Like, everyone. Well, apparently, you could pay a lot of money to solve this problem if you uh, take a therapy thing. Um, so if anybody wants to know, it's the Medical Research Network. If you are embarrassed to speak in front of crowds or you are uncomfortable meeting new people, what it should say is, are you shy or just sober? Because that, that's, that really is the bottom line there because there's a reason people love alcohol. It, uh, takes the edge off and you can take your clothes off and things of that nature. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, you can get the medication. Um, see, this is why I shouldn't close a show. I say that every time. I say it every time to people. I am not the person you want ending an evening. Because it's just a little too fly by the seat of your pants-ish. But, uh, but what will happen is now I will uh, ruminate over this and feel terrible that I've disappointed you, creating another type of clusterfuck. I may have to add another stack of Reese's, um, which will add another layer to the whole thing. And I already sometimes wear two spanks on top of each other. I can't go three. We're getting ready for the dog days of summer. I can't do three. It takes too long to use the restroom. And I'm 48 years old. I gotta pee. Every pee is an emergency now. Uh, I think it's my prostate. But I, um, I, 
it's a it's an arduous go when you got two or three pairs of Spanx on. It's it's a long, it's it's a long it's a long haul. How's that for your button for the end? Um, you guys have been unbelievably nice to indulge that. Um, so thank you very much. Good night.